Support WrestleTalk! Donate on Patreon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost here. It's almost time. It's alive. It's alive. The biggest wrestling event of the year. The grandest stage of all, where all will be revealed. WWE Fastlane, baby. And heading into this pay-per-view, to end all pay-per-views, WWE's master plan for WrestleMania is finally starting to reveal itself. This document's empty. With that said though, the run up to Fastlane Baby has been full of sharp turns, rapid rises, and sadly, a still drifting audience. Car puns. So the show is in all likelihood going to be a pretty interesting one. For one thing, I can't wait to see how they try and untangle this spaghetti junction of a story between Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey because this thing has so many conflicting plot threads it's basically a patchwork quilt, but less cuddly. And that's just one of the many question marks hanging over Fastlane Baby. So if you're the sort of person who can't stand not knowing, join me, El Fakador Laurie Blake, as I go over every single last minute Fastlane Baby rumor that we could find. Daniel Bryan to retain. Oh, how we managed to confuse our yay boo reflexes when Kevin Owens returned to replace Kofi Kingston in the Fast Lane Baby WWE Championship match against the new Daniel Bryan. He's back! Hooray! He's replacing Kofi. Boo. But Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan? Yay! KO is a face now. Boo? Yeah, boo? Ah, uh, I don't really know how to feel about that one. If you're anything like me, then you were no doubt super happy to see Kevin back, but so sad to see Kofi being replaced. What are you, what are you doing to us, Vince? The really strange part of all of this, though, is that Kevin Owens has been playing the role of babyface since his return, despite costing babyface unicorn Kofi Kingston his title shot. And Brian has been running him down for being a standard family man and committing the vile sin of bowling and being a dad and eating pizza. However, Owens is not expected to be walking out of fast lane baby with a hemp belt at all, as Daniel Bryan is the strong favourite among betting sites. Now, whether he wins clean or is helped by the Eco Colossus, the E Colossus sounds like E Coli, but he's not getting that because he's not eating meat, Eric Rowan, Bryan is expected to hold the title until at least WrestleMania, where it's expected he's going to take on Kofi Kingston, and possibly someone else too, as there has been some speculation, for example on Wrestling Observer Radio, that they might be setting up a triple threat match for WrestleMania between Bryan, Owens and Kingston. Now, I would pay to see that, but I'll just watch it for work instead. Prior to Owens' sudden return, though, Dave Meltzer was reporting in Wrestling Observer Radio that we were heading towards a Bryan versus Owens match at Mania. So this may be a way of still giving Owens a WrestleMania match, but keeping Kofi's momentum going. And despite returning very recently, Owens wouldn't actually lose anything from an interference loss. And with less than a month to go until WrestleMania, it wouldn't be hard to insert him into a potential triple threat either. So Bryan using his vegan wiles to win here would kind of make sense. Becky Lynch to win. What was one of the most exciting feuds in modern WWE history has now turned into one of the most unnecessarily complicated. As Ollie put it in his Raw review, in the last five weeks we have had Becky getting injured, Becky getting suspended, Becky getting reinstated, the McMahon's turning heel, the McMahon's turning babyface, Becky getting replaced by Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania still, with really little explanation, and a McMahon turning heel again, Becky getting arrested and suspended, Ronda vacated the Raw Women's title, WWE dropping all charges against Becky, unsuspending her, and then putting her in a vacated title match against Charlotte Flair. Ronda returning upon hearing this news and then getting given the title back. <sighs> So a match gets booked between Charlotte and Becky, where if Becky wins, she gets reinserted into the WrestleMania main event. Ronda turns heel by trashing the crowd and then beating down Becky while Charlotte looks on. What is going on? But that second to last point is actually the most important one, though, as we head into Fastlane. Baby, as we now get to see if WWE are actually going to put Becky into the Mania match by having her beat Charlotte Flair clean. Well, fortunately, if the current betting odds are accurate, that is exactly what's going to happen because Becky is a huge 1-7 to favourite to pick up the victory. And for anyone wondering what that means, a pound on Becky to win would get you a whopping £1.14 back. Barely worth it. Now, the same bet on Charlotte would get you £5. So, 
perhaps that's worth a punt if you want to lose your money. Now, while it's not a widely reported rumour, it's perfectly possible that WWE could make this even more confusing by having Ronda interfere once more just to muddy the waters even further. Because the best stories, as we all know, are the ones you barely understand. Just look at Westworld. No titles to change hands. Congratulations, you finally got that title shot you worked so hard for, and you're going to challenge for the belt at Fastlane, baby. Unfortunately, for all the number one contenders for this Sunday, however, you might be out of luck because not one of them is currently the favourite to win any of their matches. Kevin Owens, Mandy Rose, The Miz and Shane, Nia Jax and Tamina, Gable and Rude and Ricochet and Alex the Black are all odds-on favourites. To, to lose. Now this isn't all that unexpected though as WWE generally likes to save all of its biggest title changes for Wrestlemania at this time of year. Don't know why, it's only the second biggest show of the year. But it does kind of beg the question as to why there's even a need for another pay-per-view so soon after the Elimination Chamber and so close to Wrestlemania. Oh no wait, money. But that is the big problem here, because Brian seems destined for Kofi, Shane and Miz are probably going to have a feud, the Revival already want to leave, so at least the, the weight of the belts will slow them down in that case, and just think about Asuka losing a title to Mandy Rose. Seriously. And then you've got Bailey and Sasha Banks, the newly crowned inaugural women's tag team champions, who are expected to go on to defend their belts for some time as the women's tag division continues to slowly grow from the ground up. Because they even turn up on NXT to say they'll be popping back at some point to put the belt on the line. You've got to doubt that Nia Jax and Tamina would be warmly received over that way. And in a recent Twitter exchange, Bailey challenged Trish Stratus and Lita to a match for the belt, something that smacks of WrestleMania and could easily be a passing of the torch moment for the pair. The Shield to win. The Shield, El Escudo. That's Shield, Los Escudo. WWE just can't get enough of Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose triple fisting the air to get a pop. Now their latest reunion took place just this past week on Raw, seemingly ignoring the fact that Dean Ambrose said that Roman Reigns deserved his leukemia only a few short months ago. But it's all for the greater good obviously, and it's all to beat the most terrifying and tedious faction in WWE, Baron Corbin's Talent Graveyard, featuring Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Can we stop doing this to Drew now? Is it time for him to get his big push? No? Okay. Because if this is far Lane, baby, this match is the M25 after an accident. It's going nowhere. Because I like all of these component parts separately, but these big six-man tag matches of the Shield versus three randos has been done to death and feels like it main evented every Raw last year. Anyway, the rumour is that the Shield bros are going to win here, particularly with Dean's impending is it a shoot, is it a work departure, and Roman Reigns' recent return from leukaemia treatment. It would be a poor choice not to have them pick up the win. So a triple powerbomb to Baron Corbin seems to be the order of the day. I don't know. There's an announcer's desk, not table, Luke, involved. Well, I'm just lopping through that as well. Now it's thought that this match might go on last to capitalize on Roman Reigns' return momentum, but honestly, while it is great he's back, the last thing I really want to see is Baron Corbin main eventing a pay-per-view. Sami Zayn or The New Day to intervene. As previously mentioned, Kofi Kingston had his shot at the WWE Championship cruelly ripped from his grasp by that big meanie Vince McMahon. And he was subsequently replaced by gutterball Kevin Owens. Now The New Day were understandably upset by this and therefore it is expected that they will in some way interfere in Sunday's WWE title match because the stable is booked for Fastlane Baby and so we should expect to see them at some point, but given that they don't actually have a match, it makes sense for their appearance to be as an interference. That kind of half rhymes. As reported by Sports Keeda, among others, the expectation is that something will cost Owens at Fastlane Baby, and there will be a triple threat at WrestleMania with Kofi Kingston going over to win his first WWE Championship. The other big potential interfering factor for this match is one Samuel Zayn, who has been out of action following shoulder surgery in June last year. It was announced in December by Zayn himself that he would be returning soon, but there has been no sign of him since. Now with his buddy Kevin Owens in a title match, and Daniel Bryan being helped by a man with a ginger beard, why can't Owens even the odds with his own copper bearded brother? Copper bearded brothers is my gang. Or could Zayn cost Owens the match, setting up their own Mania match, 
and restarting one of the greatest feuds of the modern era. Or maybe not, because Kevin Owens to turn heel. You've got to imagine in a world in which the New Day might be out to cost Kevin Owens his shot at the WWE Championship, do you really think that Mr. No Pineapple on Pizza is going to take it lying down? Because Kevin Owens is one of the best heels of the modern era, and although he hasn't been booked to succeed, his character just fits being a heel so much more than being a babyface, right? Because despite taking Kofi's place in the match and then publicly thanking Vince McMahon on Twitter, he has been playing the role of babyface on SmackDown Live. So the New Day costing him his title shot could cause him to go a bit OTT in his retaliation. Add to that the fact that a double heel dynamic going into WrestleMania would be a much better storyline for the underdog Kofi Kingston if the idea is to have a triple threat match. It all seems to make sense because overcoming two dastardly heels is always better than one. As Daniel Bryan proved back at WrestleMania 30 when he defeated both Randy Orton and Ric Flair's birthday stripper gram gone wrong Dave Batista. You could argue that Owens has good reason to turn if the New Day interfere because interfering is a pretty obvious heel move in itself, but it would be madness to turn the New Day heel at this point, particularly with the crowd so on board with Kofi and the power of positivity at this point. So if someone's got a turn, gonna be KO. Thank you for watching and thank you to all of the names scrolling down below me for being our awesome pledge hammers on Patreon, you will get free membership to the Fakador Army. And direct your attention over there for more awesome WrestleTalk content. But more importantly, keep your eyes peeled for the big reveal on Monday as I finally unveil my master plan to destroy WrestleTalk once and for all. <laughs> you stop recording, right, Chopper? No.